Hey, I'm Jay Beershank. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Behind me here, looking at the uh, Saratoga Passage on the uh, island I grew up on called Whoopi Island. If you look back into the old archives of book reviews, you might find some other book reviews with this as the background. We're in Langley, Washington, which is a place that I love very much. Sorry for the hiatus on the book reviews. Um, I had spent the last two months up in Alaska commercial fishing and uh, I hadn't brought my camera. And I had read a few books up there, but because of my last few reviews, I didn't really want to review any philosophical works. I was reading some Nietzsche and I read like this one book called Illusions that was like a base caricature of a good book. So I didn't really have anything interesting to review, but uh, I started this towards the end of my time and I enjoyed this book and also I think it has some cultural significance and the author um, is a great one to talk about with people. So I will review this one. And that one is Sometimes a Great Notion by Ken Kesey. Ken Kesey as an individual is a pretty interesting guy. A lot of people uh, love talking about him. I haven't done a ton of independent research into him, but I'm pretty sure he was running around with like Timothy Leary and Jack Kerouac and uh, all those kind of like liberated uh, psychedelic guys back in the 60s and 70s. So I believe he's like one of the liberated minds of the 60s and 70s if you want to say that. Um, so he has a bit of a following and he's an interesting guy. He's also the one who wrote uh, The One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, if you've ever read that. I personally haven't, but of course I've heard of it. Um, so yeah, that's Ken Kesey. I believe this is his uh, last book he wrote, or near to it. It's uh, published in 64 or 63. Um, it's a really interesting book about this uh, logging family in Oregon, I think in the 50s or 60s, that starts to kind of monopolize this industry that then jeopardizes the economic standing of the town, or of the other townspeople. And it's just really interesting, uh, basically, analysis of the family and what had led them to this point of becoming this monopolized uh, powerhouse in the in the town. And then, um, basically, from the outside, that's what it looks like. And then you get a really deep look into the inside of each of, in, of the individual uh, main characters of the family that are kind of running the things and doing the things uh, that you know have turned them into this powerhouse. And then you get a uh, really interesting kind of uh, almost like a spiritual pursuit from two of the main characters. They're two brothers and uh, he, one brother is a younger brother who comes back from the East Coast to Oregon to see the family after a long time and he's sort of like the quintessential underground man or like uh, Ivan from the Karamazov brothers like very intellectual but like very in this like psychosis of kind of self-pity and um, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word, but anyway, where you think everybody's out for themselves and all this kind of stuff. Um, and you have to like be cunning and you have to win and have the upper hand in everybody. And he uses his, his intellect to do that. And in using his intellect to take advantage of other people, he then conversely uses that to then think of himself as like this, you know, person who deserves pity. And it's really interesting. But um, that's a pretty common theme you see throughout different books. But then he also comes back to meet his brother, and what I really liked is his two brothers are, are him and his brother on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So you have this underground man here, and then you have this very proud man who was just born with natural attributes that kind of made him a dominant male, if you will. And then so what the book to me was really about was these two opposite ends of the spectrum finally coming to a middle point. And the underground man had like a conniving plan to get there, but he only, but the underground man kind of had this plan to bring his brother to the middle. And then in the end of the book, you realize that like all along what he really longed for was to meet in the middle, but he just thought he wanted to bring his brother down. And then he thought he'd be okay over here, which is a really interesting idea. I loved how the end of the book wrapped together. Like they had to meet in the middle of this like two ends of the spectrum. And to his brother, his brother didn't really have any feelings towards bringing his brother anywhere because he just accepted how he was. Um, but it's a really interesting analysis of this older brother that has like these natural born, you know, attributes. Um, his kind of personal uh, humbling and kind of like his ego dissolving throughout the book through these things that his younger brother does to him, which are pretty, pretty treacherous. But one thing that I really loved was no matter how treacherous all these things that his little brother does, it all wraps around in the end and kind of shows you that like there's nothing more important than like those personal spiritual endeavors to be clean or to be cleansed or to be whole even in like and they basically forgive each other for all these pretty terrible things that they end up doing and it's really 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 interesting and uh, 
the older brother's wife, her name is Viv. I really love the portrayal of Viv. She's an amazing character, I thought. It's just like, you know, such a beautiful idea and archetype that I think a lot of women uh, basically kind of end up becoming without knowing it uh, just through the natural progression of life and marriage and kids and you know especially in like a uh, powerhouse of a family or when you have a family or a husband that is kind of like doing a lot of things and needs a lot of support to be able to stand on this high pedestal that he has created for himself and I really felt like her progression throughout the book was really interesting and her relationship with Leland is interesting. You know, the book is very emotional at some points. It's um, like there are some points where I was cringing definitely and some points where I was like, the book got pretty emotional. I had to put it down. It's like, wow, this is intense. Um, I would recommend it, but I would say that this book is one of those ones where you have to like read it for like 20 minutes, like at least 10 pages to get the ball rolling. It's kind of like not a book you just pick up and read a couple pages every once in a while. You kind of got to sit with it, which was perfect for Alaska because there are some times when I could read 50 pages at once and really get in the flow of things. But the writing style is really schizophrenic and really all over the place, which I think Ken Kesey really enjoyed doing. It seemed like when he uh, got into the uh, viewpoint and narrative of Leland who is the younger kind of like you know neurotic brother I felt like Ken Kesey really thrived in that writing style and um, so it's kind of hard to catch on to but once you catch on to it it's fun to, to dive into that kind of headspace and there's a lot of characters so there's a lot of bouncing around between these different characters sometimes and it's kind of hard to understand what's really going on but if you just kind of, you know, read slowly sometimes and go back, you'll understand what's happening. And it's a really great story, and there's a lot of things that are nuanced uh, throughout the book. And I was pretty impressed with the writing style. I think it's good. And, um, you know, the thing about American novels, too, I feel like, is so much more thing, so much more of the story is up to interpretation than, like, some other types of writers or, you know, like, Russian literature or something, I feel like everything is explained, like, very, very thoroughly and right in front of you, so there's not much up to interpretation, like, the writer is telling you what they want you to think about what's going on and why it's happening and what everything is, like, about and everybody's feelings and everybody's little nuanced, you know, synchronicities and all these little things, you know, um, but with the American novels, I feel like they just insinuate things and then they really leave it up to you to interpret what you think is going on and why it's happening. So I bet anybody who reads this book would probably have a much different perspective on why things were happening and what was going on than I would. And um, I feel like that's a common theme, you know. I haven't read a lot, of, a lot of American novels, but I feel like that was a theme in this one and like a theme in like the John Steinbeck book I reviewed, uh, East of Eden. But anyway, yeah, I think it was a great book. I would recommend reading it. It's like six, 630 pages. Um, is there anything else I want to say? Yeah, no, it's just another one of those really fun archetypal stories of, uh, you know, of the two brothers, which is always a really interesting theme to, theme to go into. And then Viv's character was beautiful, and uh, just kind of like the language of, like, old-timey America is so much fun. It's like a quintessential American story of, like, the pioneers, and I love that kind of idea, you know, because it's like what America is beautified or glorified as and like kind of like its golden age I guess you could say so I, I, I really loved reading about that they use the n-word a lot in this book uh, so I would just really sit with that and try to understand its context and cultural significance you know what I mean it's a bunch of white guys a bunch of white hillbilly loggers calling each other the n-word so you know you can take it for what it is and don't be too put off by it and just understand that it is what it is and it's part of the writing style and it's part of the context of history so um, yeah so Ken Kesey sometimes a great notion uh, my apologies for slacking on the YouTube channel. I plan to get back on it. I'm going to uh, move over to Europe in about a month. That's my plan. I'm going to basically go to Portugal and then start my life trying to become a European citizen. So that'll be interesting. And I'll do my best to document that along the way. So that's what's going on with me. And I hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take it easy. Peace.